If someone is experiencing an innate behavioral health crisis, we want to bring the most appropriate response to that calling party to help them meet their needs. The things that you know all correspond involving mental health, it, it, it's growing. It's growing every year and the resources that, that people are starting to provide and uh, people are seeing are necessary are starting to all come into play. Unfortunately, I think there's a lot of times we, we are called to service and folks do not know that we exist. Um, we'll get on scene and, and family members will tell us that I had no idea that there was a mobile crisis team, you know, with a licensed clinician and a, a, an officer that's trained in crisis intervention to respond to calls like this. So I think many times folks don't, aren't even aware that we're out there. He's advising he is intoxicated, does have pills on him. We try to gather as much information about the patient as possible. Um, Detective Birch will start looking at law enforcement databases to see if there's been prior contact with law enforcement as well as uh, if there's any history of mental health issues uh, or substance abuse issues. Um, I can check my HopeWorks ag uh, agency's database to see if other MCT units have had contact with the individual. So just try to get as much background information possible about this person and, and their crisis, what may be going on at the time. You find anything? Nope, nothing on that. No prior MCT contact uh, in our ECR. I'm not finding any contact. MC to one's direct. We'll be in route. All right. By asking the investigative questions that are related to mental health calls, we have the capability of painting a clearer picture for our responders. Well, the, you know, knowledge is power. So the more we know, the the better we can help this person. It's better than going in blind. Um, also, it's a it's a very dangerous job. We want to know if they've had any history of violence towards law enforcement or healthcare workers, and so that's for our safety as well as their safety. Um, am I going to go to jail? So at this time, as long as you're compliant with my units and you don't have any outstanding warrants, there should be no reason that they would take you to jail. Okay. I I can see him driving in the parking lot now. They're pulling into the parking lot? Okay, so I'm just going to let them know that you're on the phone with me, okay? We're always looking for the best outcome for this person, so whether it be if they need to be hospitalized, um, if they are a threat to themselves or others, um, if they're not, then obviously we want to get them linked up with services in the community. We've actually had callers that have made um, the comment to us, no, I don't want to be transferred. I want somebody to come out. And at that point, we do have an obligation to be able to um, provide that resource or that need to the public. They're here now. You just knocked on my back window. Okay, go ahead and make contact with him. I'm going to disconnect. Are you Charlie? Yeah. I'm Lance with the Sheriff's Department of Mobile Christine. Did you call 911? Yeah, I did. Do you mind talking with me? Sure. We primarily respond to nothing but behavioral health calls, so uh, calls for service service. Uh, suicidal threats, suicidal attempts, psychosis, you know, folks who have co-occurring disorders such as substance abuse and mental illness that are going on simultaneously, um, we're one of the teams that respond. So you don't mind talking to my clinician? It's fine. This is Michael, he's my clinician. Hi Charlie. Hi. So I heard you're having a hard day today, Charlie, is that true? Yeah, I am. Yeah, having thoughts of hurting yourself or anybody else today? I was thinking about killing myself. So, did you have a plan on how you wanted to hurt yourself today? I was going to take a bunch of pills. Okay. But I don't want to do that anymore. I just want help, man. Well, I'm here to help. It's my job. I'm not a police officer, so you're not in trouble, okay? We're here to get you help. Okay. I feel bad for calling you guys, but I just don't know what else to do. Like, well, I don't want you to feel bad. Then you called the right people. That's what we're here to do is help you. I have a son. I just want to be better. Like, I know I'm better than this. I, don't, I just don't know what to do anymore. Any history of mental health issues? I've had depression since I was like 17. Well, can I help you? Okay. Well, we got medics standing by. Do you mind if we call them over and have them check you out? That's fine. I think as we progress in the times, we have this, this tool bag of, of resources that, that we can use to assist 
the people in you know trying to get the appropriate healthcare that's needed for you know these type of situations. How you doing? Hey guys, this is Charlie. He's having a pretty rough day today. He's got a history of depression. He's definitely having suicidal ideation. He does have an intent and plan. Um, he's complaining of stomach issues today, and he's had alcohol on board. Okay, absolutely. Well, we'll assess and we'll get back to you guys. All right, thank you. Thank you guys. I was not expecting the response. I was expecting to go right to jail. I was thinking, boom, record now. I'm a criminal, and we'll just move on from there. But that wasn't the case at all. They sent out a licensed clinician, they sent out first responders, and they treated me like I mattered. I felt like I mattered for the first time in years. I didn't even know that HopeWorks was a thing. The long and short of it is we're all doing the same job. We each have a different responsibility in the cycle. You know, I think the resources that, that we currently have is a good start, and I think it's just progressing as we move on. You know, we have six teams in Bernalillo County and the city of Albuquerque that are actually responding. Is, it's pretty cutting edge, and we're able to provide a mobile service where, you know, many communities in the United States do not have this. And so we're actually bringing behavioral health to our patients right where they need it, right when they need it. And I finally started getting the help I needed. I'm back on my meds, back seeing my therapist, and the most important thing, the best thing, is I got back to being with my kid. You know, I could be the dad that, that I know I'm capable of being. I could be the father that, that he needs, somebody to be a light in this world, just like my mom was for me. And I'm proud to say that it was the first responders, the mental health workers, and everybody in between that saved my life that day. It's just nice to be out in the open again. If you are in a place where you are navigating the next step and not really sure where to turn, recognize that there is always help and always resources available. The Department of Behavioral Health Services is currently funding a wide array of behavioral health supports. Those services range from peer case management, peer drop-in centers, youth transitional living services, training and education, mobile crisis teams, law enforcement assisted diversion are just a few of the many programs that we're currently funding. The Behavioral Health Initiative has brought these programs forward. We encourage anyone who is needing support for themselves, for a loved one, or maybe a peer that they immediately go to our website and look for those resources and ways to connect and get help. The Department of Behavioral Health Services is changing lives.